said, you going to rope. But now he's caught up in a typhoon, a storm, a dangerous storm, a storm that takes the lives of people. But God said, my plan and my purpose for you cannot be changed. This dangerous storm, Paul said we was on sea many days. We didn't see the sun. We didn't see the star. We didn't see any moon. He said, for many days, we was out there. We had even given up hope that we would even live through the storm. But God told Paul, he said, look, just like you stood for me in Jerusalem, you got to stand for me and know, here come this dangerous storm. Go change God's plan. What God said, I purpose for you and for your life. Here come this dangerous storm. And Paul said, look, you should have listened to me. I told you not to leave. It's going to be great danger, but you didn't want to listen. But he said, but guess what? The angel of the Lord, he said, he stood by me. He said, Paul, be of good cheer. Now, every time I read it, I think, what is that to be of good cheer? The storm is about to destroy the ship. Everybody that gave up hope, but the angels say, be of good cheer. You're going to go to Rome. And those that's on the ship, God's going to spare them because he wants you to get to Rome. Even the storm couldn't change God's plan for Paul. And the Bible tells us that Paul said we got to get up on a certain island. And when they got to the island, the Bible said Paul was gathering up some sticks. And the Bible said we laid the sticks on the fire that a viper or a poisonous snake fastened upon his head. And everybody on the island said, oh, that we don't escape the wind, don't escape the storm. Yet, it is as a curse on them. You got to die. But you know what? The Bible said he shook it off and felt no harm. This is not God's purpose. This is not God's plan. I'm not in Rome. I'm in Melba. I've got to go further. See, some things come into your life and it make you think you're going to die. But you got to say, this is not God's plan. This is not God's purpose. I got to go further. Then the Bible says he shook it off. And everybody looked. You see, even a poisonous snake tried to defer God's plan. But God said, you can stop me when I say I'm going to do a certain thing in your life. Even a poisonous snake couldn't stop Paul. The devil did everything he could to stop Paul from going to war. But you read in that 20th chapter, and it came to pass. He was in Rome preaching the gospel just like God had said many years before. Back in prison in Jerusalem, he was this day standing in Rome just to find about the goodness of the Lord. See, when God make a plan and he tell you you in his purpose, God said, I don't care how much they hate you, they can't stop me. I don't care how much stones come up in your life, they can't change my mind. I don't care how much they try to kill you, I'm going to still raise you up. God said, my purpose, my plan for you is to be conformed to the image of my son. I'm not there yet. I ain't got that body yet. But guess what? I got the going on. I know this is not it. And see, a lot of people think that they've got there. But until you get to that glorified body, you got to be like Paul. You got to start shaking things off, knowing that this is not God's end for my life. Paul right there. Lord Jesus Christ brought me here so I could preach the gospel. That was his purpose. I was in prison, about to be killed. And God said, be a good cheer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. When you read it, you got to realize who's saying it. It keeps saying, he, he predestinated. He called you. You got to say, he justified you. And he is going to glorify you. You got to look at he. He says, who can change my mind? Who can change my plans? Who can stop me? Paul says he's working all things for us. He said, I got good thoughts for you. I got good plans for you. And he said, who can stop me? Paul said, if God 
is for us. Do you say that when you get in your problems, when you get in your distresses, when things don't look the right? Do you say if God is for us, it doesn't matter who it is, what their plans are. If God is for us, it doesn't matter how much shit I have I don't have. If God is for us, it doesn't matter about the faith. If God is for us, who can be against us? I, he told Israel, you're going to take them to the promised land. And the Bible says, Belak hired Balaam. He said, I want you to go. I want you to curse them people. I want you to put a curse on them like you put boots on everybody else. He said, I want you to do it to them. Get their lives all mixed up, mind all confused. He said, I want you to do something to them. And he read in the book of some Numbers. He says, in the 23rd chapter, 19th verse of the 20th verse, he said, God is not a man that he should lie, and neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not what? Make it good? Behold, he said, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. I can get all the drugs, I can get all the witchcraft, I can get all the demon forces. I can't reverse what God has blessed. If God has blessed, I can't reverse he said, you can't curse what I have blessed. Do you feel like you're blessed of the Lord? Some of y'all walk around here like y'all curse. Some of y'all walk around here like y'all going to the seed and ain't got no way out. You ain't walking around here like God is for you. Paul said, if it's for you, brother, who could be against you? Can you find a who? I don't know who he is or what he is. But Paul said, can you find out who he is? Because God said, can no Stand against me. Every time God sent somebody, he went with them. Why? Because he knows there's going to be something against them. And if he's with you, he ain't got to worry about being your guest. Because why? God's with us. He's given us the promise. He said, I never need you, and I'll never forsake you. So we can say that the Lord is always my helper. Don't you think about that when you are down. Oh, the Lord. I just don't know what to do. Is God for you? Do you believe He can actually hold you up when you feel him down? Do you actually believe He can bring you out when it takes no door to get out? I believe God is for us. Paul said, Y'all have been together all y'all want. I'm going to Lord. He said, Storm, you can act up as much as you want. I'm going to Lord. He said, oh, snake, you can bite me all you want to put all the poison in me all you want. I'm going to roll. Huh? Despite of all those things, it said it came to pass. I got to say a lot of times, Lord, I hated I doubted you. I hated I gave up. I hated that I put this hay in there. Because when it came to pass, I began to look back and say, good gracious, why did I believe like this all along? God said, I despite you. Oh, despite all those things that's causing you to think that way about me, I'm going to keep my word. He told Abraham, he said, I give you a promise. I make, a, I make an oath for you. And the Bible calls it immobility. In other words, it's impossible for God to change. He can't change his promise. He can't change his pledge. If he promised it, he can't change. And he gave Abraham this. He said, I'm going to give you my promise. And I'm going to give you my Oh, he said, I'm going to make sure you can be assured that what I said to you is going to come to pass. I look like Jesus, y'all. But I understand now why people say it's just like you never seen. And you know, brother, you just say so much now. I'm going to be just like Jesus. If you believe that, you live like that. You will act like that. You will carry yourself like that. See, God won't change what he purposed in our lives. And nothing's going to change him. 
and he's not going to take back what he promised us. And I know I'm not there, so guess what? I may not be free. I may be in prison. I may be in a dungeon. I may be in a hole. But guess what? He's going to bring it to pass. I'm going to get what he promised me. Abraham was 100 years old, past the age of childbearing. But the fact of the matter is God promised. I tell you, it feels good when you, when you say it happened. It feels good when you say he did what he said. You know, what's so, what's so upsetting is that you didn't think he would keep his word. But he's going to keep his word. Just to embarrass you. <laughs> Just to embarrass you. You doubt it. You didn't trust me. So I'm going to show you. Huh? He did to tell Moses one time. Moses said, you can't feed all these folks. He said, how you going to feed them folks 40 days? Huh? He said, they're going to have so much meat, they're gonna, I'm going to feed them for the next 40 days. He said, ain't enough fish in the sea to feed these people for the next 40 days. We ain't got enough cattle. We ain't got enough sheep. We ain't got enough things around in the field. And God asked him, he said, is, is the Lord here too short? Is something wrong with me? He said, I'm going to show you what I can do. And they told people, just get ready. Because the mom will send some quail. And, and the Bible said it was five feet high. I, it was, that's how high the quail was from the ground up. That's how many he sent in there to feed them. And Moses was trying to figure out, how you going to feed three million people in the desert? God said, I'll show you. And sometimes he have to show us. Because sometimes we sit there and say, how, how you going to do this, God? Everybody done told me. I'm, I'm through them. I can't make it. Ain't going to I'm gonna get I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to embarrass you. And I tell you, when you get embarrassed by God, you remember that. You remember that. Oh, yeah, you remember. You, I, I look back some days and I thought they were going to come out my life. Lord, they're going to come but like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just whining. It's just lights. I'm whining. The lights now. You, you can't trust me for the light bill. I'm going to show you something. Huh? Oh yeah, he showed me so. I can not only pay it, but I can make it where you ain't got to worry about it no more. Take all that out your life. But boy, I look here. The thing is, can you trust him? Because he's for you. And if he's for you, who can be against you? God's goal and God's plan is to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Nothing's going to stop that. Nothing's going to change that. Nothing's going to make God go back on his word. So you believe God's for you. You believe he's for you. You believe God can see you through to the end. So that which he starts, he's going to finish. In fact, God called the finish at the beginning. You know, believe it or not, anything that you start out to do, you see the ending before you start it. Or else you wouldn't go into it. Because if you don't have a vision that this business is going to be successful, you'll never start it. You see how it's going to make it, how it's going to provide, how it's going to... You see that, that's why you say, oh, 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 start this business. You don't go in there thinking, oh, I don't know. You won't start it. You have to have a complete, from the beginning to the end, vision. You can't just sit up here and just say, because it ain't here today, that God can't do it. Life changes so fast. I mean, it, it, it's like a snap of a finger. One moment you don't have, and the next moment you got more than enough. Huh? It, 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 it can happen just like a snap of a finger. God can do it. He don't need nothing that you want to count on. All he wants you to do is just trust him. And believe that what he said, he's going to perform. And so we thank God for his word.
We're going to actually want to stand. We're going to just pray for the whole church as a whole today. I feel like the devil been beating up on all of us. <laughs> hey, I don't know what your problem is, but I believe the devil been beating up on all of us. And I believe we need to take this word today and say, God, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Huh? I, I, I'm sorry because I didn't believe that I'm more than a conqueror. <laughs> I'm sorry that I didn't trust you because you see all things are possible to them that believe. I'm sorry because you said he'll keep me in perfect peace whose mind is still on me. I'm, I'm sorry because all your word is true. All your word is yea and amen. Oh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an embarrassing moment in my life. When I don't trust your word is a hurting thing. When I actually say God won't do it. God won't make it happen. It's an embarrassing moment. But let's lift your hands to where's heaven. God look down this day upon your people's Lord. Lord, give us the faith. Give us the assurance. To trust your every word. To know that your word has gone out and it won't return void. But it shall accomplish what you set it to do. It's assured. It's guaranteed. It'll always work. Give us the faith and the assurance to know that when we come to you in prayer, I will we call upon your name that we know you hear us and because you hear us we know the petition that we ask of you is going to come to pass I thank you I pray that you elevate us get us off the surface get us more into the spirit get us more into the mind of Christ Get us more into your ways and your thoughts. Get us more to walk and act like you. Bless us to know the greatest he does in us. And he that's in the world. I pray that your word, that when I read it, I believe it. For what it says it will do. I pray that the doubts that I have, the, the things that I don't believe, I pray, Lord, that you remove it. I pray that you help my unbelief. Give me more faith. Give me more understanding. Give me more knowledge. Give me more experience with you. And I ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you because we know right now, Lord, it's beginning to work. Starting to act. Starting to take place in our hearts in our minds and in our lives. It's starting right now. In Jesus' name, amen.